Okay, so um, before the break, uh, we talk about um, um, the uh, pace method for estimating the, to do the FPCA for the sparse functional data. And uh, so we now know that, um, so uh, we are able to recover the underlying trajectories um, uh, by using FPCA. Um, so now uh, let me uh, introduce another method uh, developed recently uh, to handle the sparse LPCA from other, another, um, another framework. Okay, so this is called a, a soup method. Um, the full name is a sparse, also normal approximation method. Okay, so let me um, give you an introduction what this method looks like. Um, so basically uh, for FPCA method, basically uh, for the FPCA method, we know that uh, the curve XIT can be written as a linear combination of LPCs. So here, phi KT are the LPCs and uh, alpha IK is the LPC scores, mu T is the mean function. So, um, so here, uh, in the past methods, they all estimate the FPC by looking at the eigenfunctions of the current function, uh, CST. So we call um, phi chi t is the LPCs. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's. Uh, uh, look at another um, definition. So here we estimate the KST as the uh, expectation of XT times XS. Okay, so you can see here, uh, we didn't uh, uh, minus the mean function here. So KST is not a current function, um, but it is still a Mercer kernel. And uh, by Mercer theorem, we know that KST can be written as a linear combination of phi MT times phi MOS. So here, lambda one to lambda two are still eigenfunctions, and uh, this phi M are still orthogonal to each other with the length equal to one. And then uh, the function XIT can be written as a linear combination of this uh, uh, this uh, uh, phi m t, okay? So alpha i m is, uh, is the coefficient to phi m t. So um, we have one theorem to show that, um, to show that um, if we want to find the optimal empirical basic functions of phi m t, to minimize this uh, uh, some square error of this uh, linear combination of phi MT with back to the curve XIT. And under the constraints that this phi uh, are, uh, are uh, also normal to each other and the length equal to one, then this phi M will be the uh, first M eigenfunctions of KST, okay? Um, and alpha m will be just the inner product of xi and phi m. Okay, so for this uh, uh, sparse orthonormal approximation method, so instead of estimate the covariant function and then do the eigen decomposition, we actually estimate the first um, functional empirical component phi MT by minimizing the uh, observed loss function. So basically we will minimize this criterion while IJ is observed data for the ice ob object subject at a time TIJ. And uh, so we will try to minimize this uh, sum square errors. And uh, so here phi M 
is the first uh, functional empirical component. And um, so we will do this optimization subject to uh, the fam are also normal to each other and the length equal to one. Okay, so what we will do is that, so we will first uh, estimate the first uh, F, uh, FEC functional empirical components, and then estimate the second uh, functional empirical components and so on. And after we get this, uh, um, get this uh, uh, functional principle empirical components, So this is, uh, this is how we estimated the first functional empirical components. So basically we just uh, will estimate a phi one or t and alpha here by minimizing the least squares. So both alpha and phi one, we don't know. And a phi one, we estimate as a linear combination of the basic functions. So uh, bt is a vector of basic functions, beta one, is uh, the corresponding vector of coefficients. Okay, so we estimate, sorry, the notation is a little bit uh, confused, or oh, it's, it's right. So we estimate, uh, so here both, so we decided B1 to BL, the basic function, and we estimate the beta one and, uh, and alpha here. So first we can set an initial value, starting value for phi one of T, which is satisfied phi one, the normal phi one equal to one. And given the current value of phi one over t, so this one is known. And then we can estimate the coefficient to the phi one by minimize these uh, uh, little squares. And uh, so this is a simple little squares estimation. And uh, so we can get the formula for alpha. Okay. So after we get the coefficient, then we can give in the current value alpha, and then we update phi one, um, subject to the length of phi one equal to one. So, um, so then, um, so we want to estimate the coefficient to the basic function beta one, right? So this alpha is known, a uh, coefficient b is known. Uh, subject to this uh, length of the first uh, functional empirical components equal to one. So we have a beta one transpose G times beta one equal to one. Uh, so this is a constraint list of squares problem. So what we can do is that we can first ignore the norm constraint and then obtain the unconstrained list of squares by minimizing this criteria. And after getting the estimation for beta one, then we can do the uh, scale that such that the norm equal to one. So after we get the first uh, FECs, then we can, so this phi one is known. So then we can estimate the second FECs, phi two, by minimizing this little square problem. Subject to phi two and phi one are also normal to each other. So what we will do is uh, first we give the starting value for first FEC, phi one T, and then given the current FEC, phi one T, we can estimate alpha, alpha I1 and alpha I2 and phi two by minimizing this uh, uh, least squares problem. And uh, so after getting this alpha, then we can estimate um, phi two by minimizing these little squares uh, given the constraints. And we will repeat the step of two and three until the converge reaches. Um, so we can repeat the step two and three until the algorithm converge. So here, this is the uh, data for the CD4 subjects. It's the CD4 percentage for 283 subjects. They are observed at an irregular time and the data are very sparse. 
So, um, so this is the estimated, uh, um, this is the estimated uh, uh, FPCs um, with the piece method, the blue one, and the black one is the soup method. So you can see that uh, these two estimation actually are pretty close. And uh, so this is the uh, uh, estimated individual trajectories um, for the four subjects. So um, then we compared the soup method and the pace method in terms of their prediction. So we select uh, 223 subjects who have at least two observations and we treat the last observations of each subject as unknown. And then we estimated the individual trajectories using soup and the pace method based on the all the observations except the last observation. And then we predict the last observation for each subject. So this is the mean square error for the prediction. And so you can see that uh, the super method uh, can reduce the prediction error almost 10%. And then we also do a simulation study. And uh, so basically, you know that uh, one difference between soup and the pace method is that uh, the soup method does not assume the, the data has a mean function, right? Does, uh, does not consider the mean function. So basically uh, here, we select simulated the curves XIT such that the mean of the function equal to zero. So in that case, uh, the pace and the super method will be comparable. And uh, so the functional empirical components will be equivalent to the LPC in the pace method. So we simulated the trajectory by two um, uh, FPCs, phi one t and phi 2 t And uh, so the, um, the um, LPC scores alpha I1, I alpha I2 are generated uh, in both Gaussian and non Gaussian distribution and uh, follows the normal distribution. Um, so the second one, uh, we assumed the FPC um, scores follows gamma distribution. So then we add in uh, some uh, random error on the curve and we get the observed data we assume that the number of uh, time points for each trajectory will be um, either two, three, four, or five. So um, we have two designs. Um, one is XIT is sampled from a equally spaced grid from zero to T. And the second one is a uniformly distributed design. So XIT was sampled uniformly between zero to T. So this is uh, the comparison in terms of the integrated mean prediction error for the fitted curve XIT. And uh, so you can see that uh, when the uh, FP, uh, FPC scores follows the Gaussian distribution, and uh, so this N is the number of curves, which are either 30 curves or 300 curves. And uh, so we tried uh, uh, compare the soup method and the pace method. And you can see that the prediction soup is always better than the pace method. Um, not always. Uh, so, so for when the number of curve is small, soup is better than the pace. And uh, when the number of curve is uh, bigger, 300, actually pace is better than uh, super method. But when the data uh, FPC scores does not follow normal distribution from nine Gaussian distribution, um, recall that uh, for the um, pace method, uh, it's coming from condi uh, formula for conditional expectation. So, um, uh, so, so it, the pace method assume that the FPC score uh, follows the uh, uh, Gaussian distribution. So when the 
real uh, FPC scores from nine Gaussians, uh, you can see that uh, the super method will be better than the piece method uh, when the number curve is either zero to 30 or 300. We also look at uh, the estimation accuracy for estimated the LPCs. Look at the integrated mean square error for the estimated LPCs. And uh, so you can see that uh, for the super method, uh, our estimation method is, uh, is much better than the pace method. The reason is that uh, for the PACE method, it estimated the FPCs by um, again decomposition, again find the uh, current function first, and then estimate the uh, again, again decompositions, again values for the current function. But you can imagine that, um, uh, so the current function are coming from the smoothing the raw current function. The raw current function actually is the second moment. So uh, it is uh, uh, can have large errors when we estimate the second uh, uh, moment. So uh, after we doing a further uh, two dimensional smoothing, the current function actually is not accurately estimated. So therefore, when we find the uh, FPC by looking at the eigen functions of the current function, the LPC will not be accurate, okay? So we feel that we estimated the LPC directly by this, uh, um, by this uh, 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 linear regression framework actually is more accurate to estimate the LPCs. So this is the uh, super method. And uh, so this is kind of a, a new development uh, in terms of the sparse LPC method. Okay, so I will stop here and uh, I'll